My nerds, what's going on? It's me, Jamoka from Sounds Nerdy, and welcome to The Blip, the show in which I like to cover news, highlights, and events from the past week in the world of tech and sometimes video games. This week, I am going to switch things up a little bit. I have a number of topics. We have some couple of press events that I want to cover, so I'm going to wrap all that up into just one topic this week. So there's a lot to get into, so let's get right into it. We're going to cover just a couple of things first before I get into the main topics, which is the IFA 2016 wrap up and Apple's press event. So first off, before we get into that, I'm not going to dive into these in too, into too much detail. But first off, Samsung recalls the Galaxy Note 7 amid battery fears. And this is uh, from Engadget, uh, just briefly. Um, the Galaxy Note 7 isn't just the highest scoring phone. Uh, we reviewed this year, it's the highest scoring product. But following several reports that the batteries were exploding, Samsung has issued a global recall of the device. Um, sales have been halted effect sales have been halted effective immediately and all those devices so will be replaced. This is bad news for Samsung and this is coming off the heels of and actually rebounding this year, um, selling uh, much better devices um, with the Galaxy S7, S7 Edge, which boosts their sales. So this is going to hurt them a little bit, uh, probably uh, more than just a little bit. Um, the problem occurs when faulty devices are being charged and it's down to an issue within the batteries themselves. So it's not the charging, it is the battery itself. And there was a report out there that things were exploding. I remember seeing that one. Samsung said that 35 cases of the, of the fault have been reported to date. It estimates the problem affects only 24 in a million devices. So which equates to roughly one of every 42,000 devices sold. So if you have a note out there, make sure you take that in and get a new one. But for Samsung, that's gonna be a big hit in their pockets. Okay, moving on, one more quick one. Um, Google Shell's plan for phone with interchangeable part sources. And this is the Project Aura that we heard about a couple years ago where, where the phone would be modular. Um, Google has suspended Project Aura, its ambitious effort to build what is known as a modular cell smartphone with interchangeable components. Um, the move marks an about face for the tech company, which announced a host of partners for Project Aura at its developers conference this past May. And it would ship a developer edition of the product this autumn this autumn so apparently that's not going to happen anymore google has scrapped that um apparently they want to just abandon it and just focus on other efforts at this point which i don't blame them at this point there's enough smartphones in, our, in the market all right now let's get on to the meat of this show so ifa 2016 took place this week and this is an event that is held in berlin and as usual samsung had their press conference and in this show they unveiled the samsung gear s3 um, a beautiful looking watch i'm going to go into this a little bit of details about the gear s3 um it has the same internals as the gear s2 so nothing new there um calls can be made from the watch um uh, but you need the bluetooth model does require a wi-fi connection um, and a voice calling app. Um, it also has full Samsung Pay integrated into the watch, which is a plus, loving that. Um, four gigabytes of internal memory. So with that memory, you can actually stream music or put music on a device and stream music from your watch. You can now access the Gear App Store right from the Gear S3 itself. Um, they've also put an IP68 rating on the device, so it's water and dust resistant. So loving that one. And you. Apparently, you're going to get up to four days on a single charge. So that is really good news. Um, not a big fan of having to charge my watch every day or two. So, All right, and another one. So uh, there were two watches that they talked about, which was the Gear S3, and then the, which is called the Gear S3 Classic, and then the Gear S3 Frontier, which is the more rugged, outdoorsy watch. So it's uh, marketed towards people who want to. Uh, do a lot of outdoors activities, hiking, biking, whatever. Um, and this um, model does have a built-in GPS into it. Uh, it kind of puzzled me why they didn't put the GPS in the other, the classic model as well, but I guess they felt that the um, Frontier one, the guys who buy that will be more outdoors, but whatever. Um, and just a two more things I want to cover from IFA. I'm going to cover just three things, so which was the Gear S3, and two more things really quickly. Another article from Engadget. This is Bang and Olufsen's 360-degree speaker, 
delivers sound and style. So we all know Bang & Olsen usually has some very tremendous style, with tremendously um, styled products and they don't disappoint here as you can see here, on chrome um, speakers which give you a 360 surround sound. Just a little bit about it real quick. Um, Bang & Olufsen introduced its Bell Sound 1 and Bell Sound 2 multi-room speakers at IFA. Um, as expected, considering that they cost upwards of $1,000 each, the new 360 degree speakers look stylish and unordinary. Um, Bang & Olufsen's set is made with more premium materials, namely rock solid aluminum, so real sturdy. Uh, the biggest feature of the Bell Sound 1 and Bell Sound 2, however, is the fact that they can project sound all around you. That, in theory, should make a more immersive experience when you're listening to any audio. So, look at that's nice. Um, the Bell Sound 1 and Bell Sound 2 arrived in October for $1,500 and $1,900 respectively. So again, you have to have some deep pockets to um, afford these speakers. I'm sure they sound nice and they look good sitting on your uh, furniture, but I will be passing on that. Uh, one more cool thing that was at IFA. Um, this is uh, by TechCrunch. Mont Block enters the 21st century with a fancy digital pen. Uh, so Mont Blanc calls its Mont Blanc augmented paper and it's basically a specially coated and coated paper that lets the pen and notebook sense their position. The pen lasts for 8 hours on one charge and you can store 100 pages until you need to remove the text to the Mont Blanc hub for transcription in up to 12 languages. Uh, Mont Blanc wants $725 for this kit and although you get a nice and you do get a nice Star Walker pen and a fancy black Italian leather notebook. So, very nice, um, very high end, more luxury item. Not sure who's going to really be buying this. I mean, it looks sweet. I mean, that's why I picked it, picked this um, article or to cover. But it looks interesting. I wish one day I could probably afford it, but right now I'll just pass. All right, moving on to one more big thing, and this is the Apple event that they had their press conference where they unveiled the iPhone 7 and some more things that we will get into. Um, so they in talked about the iPhone 7 and the iPhone 7 Plus. The iPhone 7 Plus is a little bit bigger weighs just a few, uh, just a, a little bit heavier. This time around, Apple does have an IP67 rating, so the phone is splash resistant. It's not submersible, you know, so they say, but I'm glad that they finally got on board with having a water resistant device. Uh, the home button no longer uh, physically clicks, instead, it's a haptic feedback. So as you rub your finger over it, you feel the um, little vibrations. Um, there's no headphone jack, as we all uh, the rumor suggests it and, and in fact is true. Instead, in every phone that they sell will come with a lightning port adapter so you can hook up your existing um, headphones. But in place of uh, that, there, there's an option to buy the $150 AirPod hair headphones that they will be selling separately. Um, these headphones have an infrared sensor to detect um, when the AirPods are in your ear and they have sensors that allow you to control them with taps. Um, also, it's going to give you about five hours of playback on these AirPods on one charge, which is really not a lot of time for a pair of Bluetooth headphones. Um, I'm used to um, Bluetooth devices up to about a week usually. I charge them on Monday, and by end of the week, I have to um, recharge them again. So five hours is really not a lot of time, so that's a big bummer. And at $150, that's kind of steep. Right. Also in the iPhone 7 is the dual lens cameras, which we've um, heard about. Um, both cameras, which is pretty cool, are both, both of them are uh, 12 megapixels, so that is good. Um, it's going to give you things like depth of field and um, blurry backgrounds. This is definitely uh, something that we've seen in the ACC and the LG line of phones uh, in the past recent year, so I was getting on board with that. A Super Mario Run game for the iPhone platform. Uh, very surprising, did not expect for Nintendo or Sagiro Miyamoto to get on stage and actually show off this game. So this is very interesting. So um, the, this app will release for the iPhone first. It will come out for Android a little bit later in the year. This game looks pretty cool as you can see from the video here. Um, it is a endless runner type game. 
So it is a side scrolling in this run type game. Not my ideal of a Mario game that I would want on a mobile platform, but uh, it looks fun and it's Nintendo. So I trust that it should still be a pretty good game. And of course the iPhone is not the only thing they unveiled. They unveiled the Apple Watch 2, which is called the Apple Watch Series 2 this time around. Uh, they also will be getting a Pokemon app for all, for all of us Pokemon goers out there. Yes, I still play. Um, it, this time it is water resistance as you can see here for up to um, 50 meters so it's about 150 or so feet um, so good for divers and swimmers um, some of the guts about it uh, it does have a dual core processor and that is also going to help get better graphics and they're saying that it can produce 60 frames per second um, video so that uh, is pretty interesting it also has a built-in GPS which um, they were rumored to have um, the Apple Watch Series 2 will launch on September 16th and prices for the device will start at $369 for the 38 millimeter edition I'm just um, I'm a little disappointed in the watch for the fact that it's they're still continuing with the square shape um, it looks exactly like the previous watch um, they've obviously improved some internals and functionality adding the water resistance to it but I'm more so a fan of circular watches so really disappointed that it's still a square I think that they should have switched to a circular design possibly but you know that's what they wanted to do not what I would have done but I'm not a CEO of Apple so whatever but I'm sure the iFaithful will still go out and buy the watch um, I'm sure it will work fine. Um, they also went into um, the the iOS the um, operating system. I covered that in uh, in a previous blip. You can go check that out. All right, all right, folks, and that is everything I have for you this week. A lot of news, a lot of conferences. So hope you enjoyed that. And mention that if you did enjoy this video, make sure you hit that like button. And don't forget to join in on the conversation on Twitter using the hashtag sounds 30 again we do a lot of conversations on there and we talk about you know daily topics uh, topics of the day well what's what's in the news right now I want to thank you once again for checking out this video make sure you hit that subscribe button as well my name has been Jamoka you can follow me on Twitter at SN Jamoka and until the next video guys stay nerdy